you're taking AP European history here in the right place because we've got Tom Ritchie in front of George Washington. He's got the wrong AP exam behind him, but the right AP exam in front of him. Guys, AP European history is tomorrow in a digital three hour full length format. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the changing of the guard. We've got to get rid of, throw that AP US history to the curb. We're here to do AP Euro tonight. Um, and everyone, I want to real quick, just highlight for you some of the resources I'm putting in the chat for you all and in the description, which is our guide to the digital AP exams, our study guide pack. Tom Ritchie has written some really amazing study guides for us on, uh, on the Marco Learning page. And I'm gonna post those in the description. I'll turn it over to you, Tom, and then I'm gonna walk people through some last minute tips for digital exams. All right, John, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on the channel. And we are uh, you know, going to, uh, let, let me go ahead and open up so I can see the chat here. And uh, thank y'all so much and make sure we are shouting out to Suraj Kadaji, um, okay, and Faisal's a little bit scared, but you don't have to, okay, Miss DeVoe's student, she should not be afraid at all, okay, so that's something to, uh, to note here. Um, so with that, we've got a request for the Russian Revolution, which is actually a topic that, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I have not, you know, a lot of times it's one of those things that kind of gets buried in World War One, you know, and, you know, who likes to talk about communism, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but with this, um, the Russian Revolution, I'm going to go ahead and make some uh, some tutoring notes uh, available to y'all here. Um, so this is just informal. I have not published this before. These are, I mean, I've got volumes and volumes I could publish from tutoring sessions, but um, this is just informal. I'm going to put this in the chat so that y'all can download that. Okay, uh, you know, Captain uh, Captain Ace, uh, glad to uh, glad to help. And ladies and gentlemen, make sure you follow Marco Learning on Instagram. Uh, you you know, that is, uh, you know, that is something, uh, you know, something here that, uh, that with that, we just want to make sure that we are, um, yeah, that we're following Marco Learning. You know, I provide support personally for three subjects, AP Euro, A Push, and AP Government. Marco Learning provides support for over a dozen subjects. So a lot of y'all are in 10th grade right now. Marco Learning is going to be around for you in these years that are coming up, okay? So with that, uh, you know, that's something to note here. So the Russian Revolution, I'm going to note here, Russian Revolution, tutoring notes, okay? So tutoring notes. Um, so these are here. Okay, so that's something that you can click on. You might have to copy and paste or something like that. Um, let me make sure I gave y'all the right thing. And y'all make sure to stay hydrated. I know y'all aren't talking as much as I am, but uh, make sure y'all are staying hydrated because I feel my voice almost uh, almost heading out. Um, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, um, I've got these Russian Revolution notes that uh, that I think could be could be very helpful for you. Of course, that's uh, POV me here. Um, I made them. But again, now one thing to note for some topics, especially in the early units, remember Marco Learning dot com slash AP Euro. Um, this is what it looks like when we get stuff in a publishable form. Uh, you know, there are some great and beautiful study guides here. Also, remember that there are free resources, a free practice test, and a free unit by unit study guide that can come in very, very handy for you as you're preparing for that, uh, you know, at home digital exam tomorrow as you're preparing, you know, it's not at home for all of you, but I'd say for most, but, you know, while you're getting ready for it to come up, you know, certainly you can't use notes during the exam, um, but you can use notes uh, as you're preparing, as you're sitting there. So make sure, go ahead and download that study guide pack. That is a great investment. And the reason why it's a great investment is because it's free, y'all. Okay, and that's about the best investment ever. So with that, I'm gonna go on to my tutoring notes here on the Russian Revolution. Now, first of all, you know, I've got some heavy context here for those of y'all that wanna get into that, that there's still this gap, uh, you know, between Central and Western Europe and Russia, okay? Which of course, there's still even a gap today that was exacerbated by communism, um, but a gap between, uh, you know, Eastern Europe and Western Europe. So that's something that you want to uh, that you want to note there. Now, as far as that, John may get into, uh, you know, may get into this. Now, I'm about to go to my SAQ clinic, but, uh, you know, John has a copy of this and might get into that. And we're thinking about um, the 
um, geographical distribution of industrialization and how that's going. Um, one of your SAQs tomorrow will be a map. Remember that on your exam tomorrow, there will be no non-stimulus SAQs. There will be no choices on the SAQs. Every one of them will have a certain stimulus. So you'll have primary source, uh, I mean, secondary source and the primary visual source like you usually do. And in addition to that, you've got three new kinds of SAQs, um, map, data, and primary source. Okay, so you're actually going to have five SAQs on the digital exam. So that is something that is very important to note there. Um, so going from there, we see this gap here. And then we also can see Russia kind of missed out on the revolutions of 1848. Anarchism comes up in your course and exam description. So I would definitely look into some of the differences and similarities between Marxism and anarchism, both radical socialist movements that uh, their goal was to overthrow the state. Now, note, late, note violently, okay? Um, but a little bit different because Marxists, they want a large scale insurrection led by the urban masses, whereas anarchists are more into isolated acts of terror, um, you know, orchestrated by small groups of revolutionaries. Now, the Marxists would eventually take over uh, take over Russia and start the Soviet Union, but anarchists were actually much more plentiful um, in Russia in the late 19th century. And, you know, this is the sort of thing that Alexander II, who was a liberalizing czar, who was a reformist liberalizing czar, uh, was killed in basically a terror attack, like a, bo a bomb. Uh, you know, went off and killed him. So in 1881, he's assassinated by terrorists. There is a beautiful church that is built on the site where he was assassinated. They call it a church on the blood. Um, there's one for Nicholas II as well, like basically just on the site where the czar was assassinated. Um, Nicholas II and his family are actually considered like, you know, martyrs in the Russian Orthodox Church because they were killed by communists uh, during the revolution. Uh, you know, not primarily for their faith, but the Orthodox Church, uh, you know, considers them actually not martyrs, but passion bearers. It's like kind of like um, martyr light, uh, if you think about it. Um, but with that, you know, you see that Alexander II continues industrialization. Note that, you know, that we see here in Alexander III, there is an effort to industrialize. Now, Nicholas II comes in, the Russo-Japanese War doesn't go so well. One thing we want to note about the Russo-Japanese War is that while China was subject to Western economic imperialism, not like political, but economic, uh, Japan, they decided, we don't want to do that. You know, Japan does not want to uh, does not want to do that. And so going from there, that is, uh, you know, that's something that we're going from uh, from here. And so with that, uh, you know, the Russian Revolution of 1905, it's not just because of the Russo-Japanese War, lots of stuff going on in Russia. Remember, up until 1905, Russia still had an autocracy, basically like a Louis XIV kind of government where there's no representative body, no checks and balances, nothing. And so the Russian Revolution of 1905 ends up with a constitutional monarchy, you know, so the Bloody Sunday Massacre is part of this. Now, don't confuse the October Manifesto with the October Revolution. October Manifesto is basically Nicholas II authorizing a constitution for Russia. And so Nicholas becomes a constitutional monarch, still has veto power over all legislation, but a constitutional monarch. And so with that, uh, you know, that Russia is, you know, it's still a strong czar with veto power over all legislation, but Nicholas retains the throne, um, but loses his autocratic power, at least nominally. Now, World War I, that is, uh, you know, historians argue about how much of a breaking point uh, this was for Russia. But basically, I mean, we really can't separate the Russian Revolution and the collapse of the Russian government from World War One. One thing to note here is if we're looking at, you know, beautiful study guide, ladies and gentlemen, MarcoLearning.com, free study guides for all ladies and gentlemen. OK, so as far as that, uh, as far as that goes, um, you know, as far as, yeah, let's see, World War One. Eastern Front, okay? Y'all want to see what the Industrial Revolution does, and especially the Second Industrial Revolution, where right before, in 1914, Germany actually had surpa surpassed Britain to become the number one industrialized power in Europe. And so what we see here on the Eastern Front 
is the Russians in 1917, when it was when it was over, uh, when the Russian Revolution basically result or the Bolshevik Revolution resulted in a ceasefire, um, that we have here two million infantry on the Russian side, but then with the Germans only about half as many. The Russians have like three times as much cavalry. But note here when you get in the artillery, especially the heavy guns, that Germany basically, because of their industrialization, Germany, a smaller country, defeated Russia, a bigger country, you know, twice as many heavy guns. When we go to the casualties and losses, like this is just, you know, the German empire with 300,000 killed and the Russians with, uh, you know, 2.2 million. I mean, it's just, it is a bloodbath out there on the Eastern Front, largely because Germany, uh, you know, has uh, has has industrialized. So, you know, Bismarck had this very aggressive plan of industrialization and Russia was just not anywhere near that. Uh, you know, so so really, I mean, World War One for all practical purposes is really in a lot of ways Britain versus Germany um, for most of it, because, you know, Britain has that industrial strength. It's mostly fought in France on the Western Front, but France wasn't nearly as industrialized as the British were. And so with this, you see here just how that is. Uh, I mean, it is just. Um, so, and you notice how Germany is kind of exempt from a lot of these um, civilian deaths that you see here on the Eastern Front because Germany is so, um, you know, is so much more industrialized. And so, with that, that's something that has a profound effect on World War I. Now, 1917, the Russian government collapses in what's known as the February Revolution, where there's a constitutional republic. Now, the provisional government tried to keep fighting World War I. Big mistake when you're trying to form a government. Um, the October Revolution, that is the, you know, communism. That is the Bolshevik Revolution. So the October or Bolshevik Revolution. Um, so Lenin's government basically made a peace offer with Germany. Now, another thing I've got here is Marxism versus Leninism. And so Leninism, there are a lot of Marxists that say what happened in the Soviet Union, that was not Marx, that was not Marxism and not Marxism, you know, <laughs> not, not, uh, yeah, they weren't doing drugs over there, Marxism or whatever you'd call that. Um, but with that, uh, you know, Lenin, who knows, like, maybe, maybe they were, I mean, they were communists, I don't know. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, don't do drugs, uh, you know, do well in your exam tomorrow. And that is just a public service announcement um, from your friends at Marco Learning. And so with that, uh, you know, Marx and Lenin, they both agreed that history is based on class struggle. The capitalist order will be overthrown by the working class in a violent revolution and establish a communist society. Now, note here that Marx, he had a system. He had a science behind this. And he said, first, there needs to be a bourgeois revolution. OK, and so with that, there has to be a bourgeois revolution, kind of like the French Revolution. OK, and so with that, uh, you know, this is something, uh, you know, is something here uh, that is, uh, you know, I just I, I realized that I want to switch these and I just never did. So. Well, actually, never mind. I did not do what I meant to do there. OK, so as far as that goes, um, a you know, Marx said that a bourgeois revolution has to happen first. And so with that, that's something that, you know, that's that has to happen first. And so going with this, uh, this is uh, let's see, we're going to delete that. Yeah. So then the working class is going to independently establish a class consciousness. Whereas Lenin, what I always say is there are some people would say that people are basically smart and can figure out their own interests. Other people say people are basically stupid and need to be told what to believe. Marx believes that people are generally, you know, smart and, you know, good. They can kind of interpret their own interests. Now, Lenin's like, no, people need to be told what to do. OK, now Marx said this is only going to happen in like a place like Britain or Germany, which had already industrialized and experienced something of a bourgeois revolution, which Russia still had a rural and barely industrializing economy. Now, Lenin says, nope, don't need a bourgeois revolution. I can do this. Hold my beer, Marx, or my non-alcoholic beverage, uh, root beer. Hold my root beer, Marx, because y'all are underage. Okay, so with that, hold my root beer, Marx, because a communist revolution, I can make it happen in Russia. 
And then he said the working class will not independently develop a sense of class consciousness, just not going to happen. And what you need is a revolutionary vanguard of professional revolutionaries of more educated people to help them develop a sense of class consciousness. So while Marx is like, this can only happen in Britain or later on Germany, Russia, possibly you. And so with that, you know, that they call this Marxism, Leninism or Leninism rather than just Marxism. Now, the other thing that we'll note is Lenin kind of had a pragmatic streak. You notice where he modifies Marxism, to make the revolution happen. Lenin also goes, to, you know, at first he tries what's called war communism. He is completely industrializing state control of all industries with no private enterprise on um, collectivization of agriculture. OK, um, and then basically, surprise, surprise, war communism was a complete economic disaster. And then in 1921, Lenin implements the NEP, um, New Economic Policies. Now, policy. Now, your teachers would get that more than you would if it's like you're down with NEP. <laughs> yeah, you know me. All right, Lenin. But the thing is, Lenin decides we can do petty capitalism. Now, I'm about to go and engage in some petty capitalism uh, myself doing some SAQ clinics. So I'm going to turn this over to John, who has years of experience um, in some, uh, you know, some really great tutoring, uh, you know, operations um, and is going to take great care of you. Those of you who came over with me, if y'all don't know John yet, uh, you're going to, and of course, you're going to meet Marco. So y'all are going to be in good hands in just a second. Um, so with that, and remember, Marco Learning's here for all kinds of subjects as well. Um, in the future. So the thing is petty capitalism. It's basically people like, you know, I've got a YouTube channel, a tutoring company, but I'm still working. You know, these are like small business owners, somebody that owns like a mom and pop restaurant or something like that. Petty capitalism, Lenin's like, whatever, go ahead and do it. And so, you know, basically state capitalism on Lenin's terms. Now, this doesn't mean that Lenin believed in capitalism, but he's basically kind of giving a nod to Marx and like, you know, Russia was not quite ready. OK, and that's what that's what they the communists always say. It, it wasn't quite ready for it to work. You know, it, it just wasn't ready. It just wasn't ready. Not that it doesn't work, but it just wasn't ready. Um, so that's uh, that's the thing there. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's a little introduction to the Russian Revolution. And again, ladies and gentlemen, want to bring uh, John back uh, back on the screen here. And at some point, y'all get to uh, probably take a look at the mascot if he's cooperative. Um, so, John, thanks uh, a bunch for having me on the channel here tonight and, uh, you know, have fun with all these new subscribers uh, who are going to find out what Marco Learning can help them with, not just on this exam, but with all kinds of exams. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. And everyone, I put the link to Tom's AP Euro playlist. He hearts AP, um, kind of. The, thank you, Tom. Have a great night. And yeah, heart AP, not necessarily like the people that run it, but some <laughs> of them are good people. But yeah, but but AP, I mean, this is great. Marco learning merch, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Marco the dog right there on the heart. All right. <laughs> Thanks again, John. Always thank a pleasure. You, Tom. Great. And everyone, um, I'm John from Marco Learning. I want to help you all through the digital exam content. I'm going to look at a couple of things. Um, the digital exam content. And yes, I think my dog probably has to come on first. Um, as well as um, some of the information we have about the 2021 AP exam. So real quick, I'm gonna pull up. This is the ultimate guide to the digital AP exams. I posted this earlier in the chat and also in the description. Um, and hold on real quick. Um, just getting rid of that. Um, Great, and by the way, for those of you who, I don't know if any of you follow us on our Instagram page or on our TikTok page, um, but if you don't, go, pull out your phone, grab at Marco Learning on TikTok or Instagram. We not only do we post memes and nonsense, but we actually post some good, helpful advice, including tips about the digital exams, some of which are based on this guide. Um, so real quick, hold on one second. Um, Okay, so this digital guide not only contains all the links to all the things, including exam formats, which I'm gonna go over, it also links to this video of me and my dog, Marco, going over how to do well on this exam. And crucially, it also goes through some tips that I put together from my experience in test prep on how to you know, deal with not moving back and forth on uh, questions or annotating the digital AP exam, um, uh, which is an interesting, weird thing I'll show you in a minute, or typing your free response answers and managing your time. So again, this I'll post in the uh, uh, link in, the, in, in here, and I'll just type digital guide. Um, 
And let me pin this to the top of the chat. So check that out. Now, here's something I want to show you all. We are currently looking at, and this is linked to on our page, we are looking at the College Board's official guidelines for the 2021 AP European History Digital um, Exam. So let's zoom in and take a look. Here's everything we know, and this was updated with some clarifications on 4-8-2021. So we know that the digital exam will contain three SAQs. Unlike, and you might have seen these, for example, these are the real free response questions from 2021, which I'm going to pop in the chat. I'm just going to say 2021. This is also in the description um, here for you. Do you notice on the paper and pencil exam, all those paper and pencil people got to pick between question three and question four? You don't get to pick. So your experience of the exam is going to be different. You're going to have the first question, which is going to include a primary source text, and it will focus on historical developments or processes from 1600 to 2001. Question two will be a map source. We haven't seen a required map source before. A map could show up, but it's not normally how this works. And it will focus on historical and developments and processes from the basically the entire period of AP Euro. Then question three will be an image, kind of like what we normally see in the question two. If you've seen that, this was this year's one. So this is the 2021 paper exam, uh, exam but of Henri Testelin, French artist, of Colbert presenting the members of the Royal Academy of Science to Louis XIV in 1667. And here's Louis in his all his frippery and finery and pantaloons and everything he's wearing here, surrounded by men of science and a priest and a globe. And this is what your typical image one is. This is gonna be your question three. After the 55 question multiple choice section, uh, after the short answers, you're gonna have 40 minutes to answer these three. The computer's gonna send you to an automatic 20 minute break. And the, the computer's gonna kind of lock down. And then it's gonna be like in a 20 minute break, you can't, turn it off, and then it's going to go back in automatically. You don't control this process. The break starts, the break lasts, and the break ends automatically. Then we're in section two, okay? You're going to get a standard, typical old DBQ with seven documents. Now, let me show you how this looks on the actual test. So I'm on the College Board's website, and again, this is all kind of linked out from here, our ultimate guide. That's why it's ultimate. It's got all the links. If we go to the preview of the digital exam guide, I want to show you a couple things about the DBQ. So one thing they say here on the DBQ is you manage your own time. You're going to like deal with the DBQ time within an hour and 40 minutes. You have an hour and then 40 minutes for SAQs. If you steal a few extra minutes from the final set of short answers, that's fine. But once you submit the DBQ, you can't go back. It says it here. Do not spend too much time on any one question, the DBQ. But remember that you cannot go back to a question once you've submitted it. So that's how this works. It's going to be, just to summarize, 55 questions, 55 minutes, multiple choice. Three short answer questions in 40 minutes. An automatic 20-minute break and a typical old DBQ. There will be no long essay question. You're going to have two other short answer questions. Here's how it works. Question two, which is really question four, of the short answer questions will have a source with a data set. This is a chart or a graph. Um, and it chart, table, graph, whatever. And it will focus on the full period. And then the final one will a, be a secondary source text. So it will look like typical question one here. This is from Anne Louise Germain de Stael, which is from 1818. And that is an older uh, secondary source that you have to analyze looking back at the French Revolution, sort of a primary slash secondary source. So this is gonna be a secondary source text from 1600 to 2001, and they're gonna combine those two. Any questions about this, and I'm gonna put this exam formats link right here, so hang on to this for me um, in the chat. Um, again, I've linked almost all this stuff in the description of the video. This is on page, um, well, I mean, they didn't put the numbers on here. Thanks, College Board. But whatever page, uh, page five, it looks like, where this information is, is stored. On the digital format, a couple of other things. If you have not realized this, there isn't a timer that you can hide until there's five minutes um, left, and it will be, sit there in red, 
and be there on your screen. You can annotate. So I'm not actually touching anything. The College Board software is kind of showing off in their slide how you can highlight, underline, and do all this work. We are not recommending that you get lost in this annotation software, right? Figure out a way that is something that you can count on. Um, yeah, and some of you, and the exam setup is hurting your head. Um, and I encourage you all, if you have not done the exam setup, do it like right after this video. Go to the download the College Board app um, and make sure that you are fully logged in, fully set up, clear out your workstation um, and make sure that you're really taking your time with this. So this is the annotation tool. There's a reference chart we don't need because this is Euro. You can expand out and zoom in and out of your answer choices. So I definitely recommend that you get comfortable with this get comfortable with all the rules and regulations. You do not need to um, spend all your time reading instructions on test day. The instructions aren't going to change. Um, regarding the multiple choice, of course, you cannot go back. This is the thing we've been talking a lot about on our TikToks and our Instagrams and everything. And by the way, uh, guys, don't spam in the chat. Um, I'm just going to... Um, Hang on one second. Um, just put some of these people in here. I'll, I'll get to your questions when I can. We're, we are going to also look at the at the free response questions. Okay. So and thank you by the way for everyone who's here. If you like this video, press that like button. Subscribe to our channel. We've got a whole playlist actually inside this channel to help you guys with each of the main units. Okay, so you will not be going back on this. Remember there are automatic breaks and there will begin and end. Let's take a look at this typing software for just a second. Do you notice this everyone? It says 1A, B, C, D, E. You can move back and forth within different parts of a short answer question, but you cannot, once you submit the full question one, it's over. And this is exactly how this will look on your test tomorrow should look is each short answer question. And again, I'm going to just um, block off people who are spamming in the chat, please don't. Um, so these short answer questions have multiple parts. You can go back and forth in these uh, parts. So, um, but once you submit question one, that's over. Source documents, you notice guys for the DBQ, each of the documents will be here. You'll be able to move in and out and zoom back and forth. All of that functionality is set up for you to set to, to do well. Once you submit that essay, you cannot go back. One key thing I want to show you all, and I uh, we did go over this on the Marco Learning TikTok channel, was there will be no cameras, no photo ID, no microphones recording you. This is officially not an open book, open note exam, so you can't have anything open. We are strongly recommending that you do not touch any of that stuff. On a DBQ, guys, it's already an open book test. They're putting seven documents in front of you. Going on Wikipedia rabbit trails, finding videos, trying to sync up with other people who have different things, it's actually going to waste your time. Focus on the documents that you've got. Um, and let's take a look, for example, at those 2021 free response questions. And this was a very typical kind of free response set with the exception of the DBQ. So we got, you know, you're gonna get one of these, I think this is your question five. Um, you're gonna get one of these, I think this is your question four, the image-based one. Here's this one that is asking you to choose stuff. You will not be choosing. You're gonna have to answer each part of the short answers on your exam. Somebody was asking earlier about what should you do for short answers? How much should you write? And the correct answer to this is like two to three sentences, complete sentences can get the job done. Tom Ritchie's always said, make it a specific answer question, an SAQ, specific answer question, not just a short answer question. It's not about the length of your response per se, it's about the specificity. So instead of saying the Reformation changed many parts of society because Martin Luther made things different, say Martin Luther challenged the authority of the Catholic Church argued for sola scriptura, the doctrine that the Bible is the primary uh, source of inspiration, and railed against the selling of indulgences in the early 1500s. I've got names, dates, places, people, and events packed into that that makes it specific. So aim for every specific name, date, place, person, and event. We're going to try this right now. I want to go to um, this right here. 
Here is this image of Louis XIV. This is from the 2021 released paper and pencil exam. You won't see this tomorrow, but this is what people had to take on the um, exam earlier. So um, when you look at this image, this is about uh, the scientific revolution. I want you all in the chat right now. I want you to name every single name, date, place, person, event, thing, word, whatever that you know about the scientific revolution. Who are the, who are the um, celebrities of the scientific revolution? Who are the poster men and maybe some women, but probably mostly poster men of the scientific revolution? What, um, okay, great. Um, couple things. Okay, yeah, so I see them coming in right now. Um, Galileo, Copernicus, um, Brahe, heliocentrism, Galileo, heliocentric, Newton, all this stuff is coming in into the chat. And this is all correct, right? Nobody so far has put, <laughs> um, some people, uh, um, have almost all of you have something real. So you come back to this image and it's asking you, Describe one way the image depicts a significant feature of the scientific revolution. A lot of you were saying heliocentrism. Oh, look there, there's a model of the universe with something at the center, right? An interest in astronomy. Uh, here is, let's see, we've got uh, rolls of paper, books, maps, there's cartography. We've got, um, let's see, exploration. We have anatomical uh, interest. We have exploration and, and the circumnavigation of the globe. All of these things relating to heliocentrism, relating to anatomy, Newton, are things that you can talk about specifically that are going to help you. So this is how you can approach one of these, these questions. Or let's do the exact same thing, everyone. The Enlightenment. The Enlightenment is the application of the scientific revolution's ideas of logic and empiricism and all that stuff to law and society. So name for me all the famous people that you can from the Enlightenment. Famous people, books, laws, places, wars, events, anything that you can think of. Type that in the chat. I got Locke, Rousseau. Um, and let's see, I'm going to give this all a second to catch up in the in the stream. Descartes, Bacon, um, lot, okay, these are more of the scientific enlightenment. Um, yes, and uh, Salons, Diderot, Rousseau, um, liberalism, Montesquieu, Adam Smith, there it is, it's flooding in. And guys, those specific people, specific ideas of liberalism, of, <clears throat> of, um, Life, Liberty, and Property, John Locke's ideas, of the Baron de Montesquieu. Every single one of those people is something that you can grab onto in your short answer question and make specific. Laissez-faire, separation of, of powers, exactly. These are really, really smart answers that I'm getting here. This is the question that you're gonna ask yourself tomorrow. They mention the Reformation, you're talking about Martin Luther, John Calvin, Henry VIII, and the poster boys. They mention the Northern Renaissance, you say Erasmus of Rotterdam. They mention industrialization, you say England first, the spinning jenny. You talk about um, uh, the, the cottage industries, women in the workforce, urbanization. Those are the correct answers. So one of the things that, that can be really helpful when you check out, and this is in our study guides, we've got this list for you all set up. And I've pinned this, I'm gonna pin this to the chat for you all. Um, this study guide, and this is, um, I'll pin this here. Um, this study guide has those words. So you say, I say Italian Renaissance, you say humanism, Medici, Petrarch, right? And I'm just gonna randomly go somewhere. Um, that was the enlightenment. Let me go to uh, social reforms. If you can talk about Karl Marx and the socialists, if you can talk about popular sovereignty, you're talking about the right thing. Um, social Darwinism, the Allies, Winston Churchill, the atom bomb. All of these are correct. And one thing I'm going to do, guys, don't spam in the chat um, because I am, hold on one second. Yes, just. Um, and a couple of things real quick. Um, 
So um, Molly, by the way, great to see you, Molly. Um, they do, do you think dumping all the ideas on a sheet of paper is a way, uh, before writing is a waste of time? And that's a great question. I think that the answer to that is it depends. So the perfect amount of kind of like dumping information can be done for short answers and DBQs in two minutes or less. If you had a long essay question and you don't on the digital exam, you'd go through a longer exercise, but it's like, oh, I need to think of outside information or contextualization, disappear and scribble as much as you can. Remember everyone, you don't need to write on paper and then type it because let's take a look at this software again on the digital exam, right? You can actually be typing your notes right in here. Do the brain dump right here. Brr, all those enlightenment people, all those reformation people. Um, and you know what I'm gonna do real quick is I am just going to get rid of this. Um, thank you. Um, and I appreciate, by the way, everyone behaving in the chat and helping me out here. And if, again, if you're enjoying this video, press that like button um, and be in touch with us at Marco Learning, we're here to help. So in this uh, chat box area is where you can be listing out that information and it can help you. And um, Sukran, you're asking, will the digital DBQ be easier than the in-person one? Let's take a quick look at this DBQ. There was a bit of a meltdown. I posted a TikTok about this, uh, the, the AP Euro DBQ. I think it had like 400,000 views um, and people were having a bit of a meltdown. It This is a difficult DBQ topic. And let's talk about this. Evaluate whether or not British imperial rule in India during the 1800s was primarily influenced by liberalism. I think there are two things that made this hard. One is that this locates, it's kind of moved the pin out of Europe and into India. And the sources come from both Europe and India, which feels very AP worldish, not very AP Euro. That's one of the first challenges here. The second challenge is this word liberalism. So um, let me know in the chat, everyone, what is your definition of the word liberalism for the period of um, for the period of the 19th century, not today, conservative versus liberal or Tory versus liberal or whatever category does not apply the same way. What does liberalism mean in the 19th century? And while you're typing that, I just want to say that you can definitely use the documents to help you figure this out. So, um, and shout out to Mrs. Sousa, by the way. Um, if you had this uh, source right here, this is an English Judge Henry Russell. He's in the case of, uh, of a soldier who's been accused of arson and murder. Some of you were saying free market, more freedom, equality, rights, laissez-faire, capitalism. Looky here, it says the natives are entitled to have their characters, property, and lives protected. The protection of the law for everyone equally. Right? So laissez faire, individual freedom, the right to life, liberty, and property. There it is. It's all hiding out. Lockean ideals or liberal notions of popular sovereignty. Right? All of this is actually inside the sources. So people are having a bit of a meltdown, but the sources can drive that forward. Um, remember, Tom Ritchie on his channel has posted not only a video breaking this down, but also a um, and, you know, and again, behave in the chat or I will ban you from the channel. Boom, I'm CEO of this chat, so chill, shrewd. Um, okay, the, okay, nope, too late for you. Um, okay, and the, so the DBQ, remember when you're looking at the LEQ for this, you can ignore them. There is no LEQ for you all tomorrow. But again, this is one of those things where it's, these are, none of these things are surprising. Okay. Um, I want to take a minute and ask for some questions from all of you in the chat. Um, and make sure that I'm I'm getting good answers to all of you. Again, we have on our YouTube channel here, everyone, a playlist for each part. Actually, I'm going to show this to you real quick, just so you can all see it. We, if you've got questions about the DBQ or individual things, it's all here. So if you take a look with me at this. I'm gonna share my screen. So this is our playlist. Now look at what we've got in our AP European history playlist. And I'll put this here. Um, yes, and they will not let you copy and paste those notes. So I'm gonna 
put this, I'm going to pin this message to the top. So here's what we've got, everyone. This is a guide to the digital AP exams, how to ace them with some strategies right here at the top of the list. Then Tom Ritchie goes through all nine units. In the middle, we've got a DBQ walkthrough. I took Tom Ritchie's rubric and I walked through each and every point in about 10 minutes. Um, then we've got individual, we have our live review from the paper and pencil exam. We also have um, parts of the long essay question, which you don't want, DBQ, contextualization point, evidence points, sourcing, reasoning, complexity, multiple choice. I'm grading Emily Glenkler's DBQ, which is actually an imperialism DBQ from the 19th century. This is kind of for AP World, but also for AP Euro. And there are some, I'm going to move this one to the top. This is my checklist video for AP European history that's going to help you all get ready. So again, this is for um, for all of you in the chat. Now, I'm going to stop sharing and um, check to see um, these. So yeah, you're talking about Luna, Tom Ritchie's uh, YouTube videos. We've got Crash Course, his channel. So regarding um, multiple choice, real quick, I want to show you all, we're going to go to our practice test for AP European history. I'm just going to show you a quick crash course in this. Again, we've got videos for it. So this practice test, I will link to in the chat. You can, um, let me just do this, free test. And this, I'm gonna pin this. Okay, we are currently looking at this test. And I'm gonna scroll up to an image. Let's grab something nice and straightforward. Um, Sorry, just give me one second, everyone. Okay, here we go. Here's a map. One tip for multiple choice questions tomorrow, everyone, is make sure you read all the stuff around this. A lot of people rush this step and they get themselves in trouble. So here we have France is French Indonesia, Netherlands, uh, Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom, which is in dark black. Okay, and you can see the Netherlands is here. Great Britain is in dark black. And then you have these other variations of gray, light gray is Spain, the Philippines. And these are the numbers that, that track with them. You can see the numbers two, three, four, and five. Okay, which of the following best describes the European economic system that underpinned trade with and colonization of the region shown on the map? So what is the European economic system that describes the use of colonies for trading purposes? Is it feudalism? the medieval system that bound a lord to his serfs? Is it mercantilism or mercantilism, the system of trade governance that, that was useful in the 17th uh, and, and 18th centuries? Libertarianism that maximizes individual freedom or isolationism um, that is all about separating yourself from the rest of the world. So it's quite easy when you, when you, when you it's testing a word and you know it, you can fly through it. Now, here, this is harder, 24. Which of the following was a major contributing factor in the European exploration of Southeast Asia? So I have a confession to make. I don't know a lot about European exploration in Southeast Asia. I don't know a lot about a lot of things. And in fact, if I took an AP European history exam right now, I would get a five on it and I would get a whole bunch of questions wrong because you don't need to be perfect to do well in this exam. You don't even need to be close. What you need to do is make sure that you get the most points you can in the time that you're given. Do not spend seven minutes on one the multiple choice question. Do not botch the timing on this test, maximize your result and don't be perfect. So what I wanna do um, is share my screen one more time and take a look at this question that I'm acknowledging I find difficult. Is it that the, what was a contributing factor in European exploration of Southeast Asia? Was that contributing factor the European rejection of Chinese and Muslim navigational techniques, that Europeans rejected Muslim and Chinese navigational techniques um, that caused them to do that? Um, renewed interest in the learning of languages uh, and of indigenous peoples. Uh, I don't think that Europeans were super interested in that. The economic failure of European colonies in South America. Well, South America would be maybe Spain. That's why the Spanish were there. Maybe the Portuguese, I don't know. Um, 
Okay, and please, again, do not spam in the chat. Um, the need for laborers and markets to supply industrial enterprises in Europe. And the answer to this question is D. They use indigenous labor here and they used um, goods to support economic markets. So D is the correct answer. And I didn't really know that that was the answer. I just knew that A didn't have anything to do with it, that B was not something that Europeans, some anthropologists were interested in, but not really. This doesn't make sense because the only countries in South America are Spain and Portugal. That doesn't explain why the French and the Dutch and the British are there. So this is a really good um, example of how you look actively for wrong answers and that will help you. Okay, so again, no if spamming in the chat. I am going to just deal with, delete all this. Okay, so the, um, Okay, any other questions? There is this question about the breaks. I know that there's a 20 minute break between section one and section two. There may be a short one that's baked in. I'm not, I, can't, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think there, there might be a couple of other short ones, but the key one is, the, is that, that 20. Um, okay, so any other major questions or topics I can cover before I bring on Marco? And actually, before I bring on Marco, what I can do is maybe um, encourage you all to get your uh, cameras ready so you guys can take a, a picture um, of Marco. And yes, actually, there should be some moderators here to keep this. Normally, we have a very well-behaved chat, and most of you have been amazing. Um, give me one second. I'm going to be back with my dog, and then we will get going with some more questions. Hang on, I had to just turn the mic back on. There's Marco. Now Marco is digging in the garden, so he's very dirty and he's fighting me. He doesn't want to be here with all of you. <laughs> Marco, get back. <laughs> Marco, let's say hi to all your fans. They've been waiting for you. Look at him. You can see how dirty he is. Oh. Hopefully you got your pictures. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's Marco, founder of Marco Learning. And he is napping because you know what? It's too late to be studying everyone. It's time to go to bed. If you are looking for things to do, yes, I do have some fluff behind me. If you are looking for things to do, let me take you to all the resources that I have in the chat for you. The first, this is in the description of the video, is the ultimate guide. Go ahead and read this and watch this short video on how to do well in the exam. Remember, this exam format I posted in the chat earlier, I'll post in the chat again for all of you to make sure that you have available um, on the test. And let me just do this. Yes, there's so much love in the chat for Marco. Um, and yes, um, good. He is a Samoyed. That's exactly right. So some of you know this, a lot of you are going to get that multiple choice question right tomorrow on what kind of dog Marco is. Um, remember that the 2021 20, AP European history free response questions are available for you um, in the description of the video. Um, there is the free study guides that we have on our site. I'm gonna push this into the chat as well for all of you. One great place to go is actually, it's just very simple if you don't get the link in time is, to go to marcolearning.com slash AP Euro. We have free study guides um, on each of these topics in the early units, if you need that review, as well as our main study guide pack. That's this, the two page cheat sheets on each of the units that are available for you there. Our free practice test for AP Euro. This is a good place to practice a few multiple choice, not all of these. Um, one question I'm getting in the chat real quick is like, what unit is the most important unit? All nine units are weighted equally in AP European history, unlike 
the APUS, which are weighted differently. Regarding the complexity point, we have a video for that on our channel, but you are not gonna focus on all that. Um, and again, guys, one at a time on the questions. Um, the, um, so, okay, real quick. Um, so yeah, these each of these nine units counts just as much. So I would pick only one or two um, questions to, to help you out. This free practice test has the multiple choice with explanations that breaks everything down. And then crucially, this playlist has all the things you need. Do not try to study everything. Try to study just what you think will help you the most. And again, be in touch with us at Marco. Comment on our, our, our Instagram and TikTok content. Let me know. Um, oh, by the way, the, the multiple choice we just went over was the Marco Learning Free Practice Test. There are no released multiple choice. And remember that after your exam, you are not allowed to talk about the exam content after it, okay? So um, great. Guys, reach out to me. If you have questions, you can uh, comment on our TikToks and Instagram. We do a lot of those. If you're watching the recording of this, post your questions in the comments. And best of luck to you 